Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a peaceful princess in a beautiful palace. She wore a puffy blue dress, and she had nothing in the world to do except perpetuate prosperity and, of course, be madly in love with her perfect Prince Charm. Across the stagnant moat, there lived an equally stupendous couple who had shockingly white skin that sparkled in the sun. Their lives were stupendously free from war or bloodshed, even though they had a slight situation regarding uh, sipping human blood and stepping on the feet of the local vampire mafia. And then in the mansion next to them, or rather in the dungeons of the mansion next to them, resided a rather mousy young woman who was chained to the wall. But no worries, because she was chained there by her own consent, by her lover who whipped her until she cried. This land, far, far away, is known as romances that don't exist, shouldn't exist, or are just plain wrong. And sadly, this land is only as far away as your local bookstore or library. Because you see, we've been tricked into thinking that love is roses. But love is not roses, because roses have thorns. So either you cut your calloused hand as you desperately hold on, or you cut them. You cut them and you get rid of an essential part of what they are. But you see, love is not roses. Love is a sunflower. It does not crouch low to the ground waiting to attack. Love stands tall. Love is bright. And in fact, though the stem might be a bit fuzzy or prickly, it's never sharp enough to harm. It's never going to draw blood as it boils the ground, falling to the floor, and then bottle it up and label it romance. No, love is something tangible. And love is a sunflower that gives away its seed. Love is a verb, it's an action. It's something that you do, not feel. It's a mutual symbiosis of taking and giving and taking and giving and taking and giving so many times over that even if you were keeping count, you would have lost track. Because it doesn't matter how beautiful the flower is, for love is a little bird standing on a sunflower eating the seeds. Because love is support. Love is not trap door sprung tight, ready to clomp down, never give and go, but clomping flesh to flesh, desperately trying to hold on. No, love is inner calm, not inner turmoil. It has no dark hidden secrets, it shines, it shines bright. And sometimes when the sun is blocked, it withers away. But once the rain passes away, it will stand up again, as long as it's planted right. And yet, I hear you ask, if sunflowers are so strong, why then are they dying? All right, so uh, my story is why are the sunflowers dying? The reason that I wrote this, I decided to write this story is because I coach a bunch of seventh graders on the weekend, and uh, part of our job as a coach is to get really close to these seventh graders. So one of the things that they told me that I should do is talk about romance and love with these seventh graders because this is the thing that they're all into at this age. So the first question, or the first thing I started with, uh, one of the sleepovers that we had with them was, so I never had a crush before. What does having a crush feel like? And they start telling me all these things about butterflies in their stomach and things like that. And then I ask another question, which is, what does it look like when someone else has a crush on you? And I thought I'd get the same type of responses, except it was completely different. The responses, no, the responses that I got were things like, first of all, a boy will uh, send you sneaky messages. He'll like all your profile pictures. Once he likes all your profile pictures, he'll buy you food, which is how I learned that half of my girls are eating lunch on someone else's money. Um, and then, if you reject him, he will start cursing, he will threaten you, and he might physically abuse you. And these are girls that are 12 to 13 years old. I have one of my girls is in a relationship with a 17 year old because he has threatened her. And I don't have to go into the details of what happens in these type of relationships, but it's an incredibly abusive relationship. And because she's obsessed with this boy, or obsessed with the idea of this boy, she believes that she's in love with him. 
So, as someone who I never liked the romance genre, I realized that this was in fact possibly the biggest need for my community of girls. So I decided to address this need. How do I address this need? Well, my story is about three different plot lines, three different main characters. One of them is a young girl who's in seventh grade. The other one's an older girl who's in college. And the last is a mother. Amira, Noha, and Gehel all go through different challenges. Amira is just starting to get, you know, the whole issues, same issues that my seventh graders are going through. Noha is choosing between two boys, and Gehel just realized that she's been married for 23 years to the wrong guy. So each one of them goes through different challenges, and each one of them has to face different things. And then when they're put into a stressful, catastrophic situation, they have to find, they realize that they don't have time, they have to come to you know consensus on what they want. So Amira realizes that what being in love is not being in obsession. Um, Noha realizes that in fact hate is not the opposite of love, or hate is not the opposite flip side of love. So if I hate someone, then it's just a step away from loving them. And then Gehed realizes that love isn't an instantaneous thing, it's the decision made every day. Some of the lines in the poem that I uh, recited is um, actually lines that Amira likes to write down. She's obsessed with love, so she writes down any quotation that she can find about love, and she compiles them. So some of these, these quotations about love are the tidbits of information that she gives across the way. So uh, this is why I believe this book is necessary. It's why I believe I should be the one writing it, because I get exposed to all of the beautiful love stories that I get from my seventh graders. <laughs> And I truly believe that this book is incredibly beneficial, especially in Egyptian society, because these type of issues aren't really raised. Thank you. Ask you a question. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sunflower shaped, uh, what are they called? Blondies? Yes, I have some questions.